Hello to all my friends in Prague and the Czech Republic. I'm Mark King from Level 42 and you're here in my studio. I'm uh, just going to show you, it's a bit of a mess I have to say, but it's a working studio and there's all kinds of things. Let me just show you around quickly. Uh, what have we got there? Oh, we got all kinds of guitars and stuff and what do we got here we've got npcs we've got some tc electronic amps and i've got all kinds of things davros's dalek chair there look uh computers for days macintosh stuff a lot of bases up on the walls yeah that's a old strat there and uh, what have we got here bit of an old gibson hiding around there this is my mobile rack ah this is what we record level 42 on the road with look at that da -da -da. It's like James Bond. Uh, what else? Have we got a drum room in there? It's, uh, it's where I get Gary and Pete Ray Biggin and come in and play. And uh, note the egg boxes on the walls. You can't take the farmer out of the man. That's what I always say. So let's get that back. Yeah, there we are. Get Dad Ross's chair out of the way. I'm just going to uh, string up my status 30th anniversary bass guitar made for me by Rob Green you'll see it lights up and it says um, Mark King and it says 30th level 42 30th anniversary in their beautiful bass um, I've worked with Rob for many years now and he's really looked after me come up with the goods and we sat down about mm, 10 years ago 11 years ago now to come up with the shape and the design for this bass guitar, uh, which we thought we'd call the King Bass. And I, I love them, absolutely love them. And, and every couple of years or so, me and Rob get together again and we tweak away at stuff. And <clears throat> we have another one in the pipeline at the moment where we're working on some parametric EQ, which is going to be very exciting. Um, so I'll keep you posted on that one. Let's just get some strings on here. These are um, these are hot wire strings. I also get these from Rob Green as well from Status, and they're very nice. Um, they're double ball ends, as you can see. I have uh, they make it makes changing strings very quick and easy because you have a ball at each end of the string, hence the double ball end. And I always find that two balls are better than one um, for many things in life. Uh, and I use very light gauge strings, actually. I use um, 30, 50, 70 and 90, which is very quite light for, for bass guitar strings. But it's when I started playing bass um, in Macari's music shop in London in 1979, um, they, there was, uh, they had an, an old Gibson EB, an I, EBO? Or an EB3, I can't remember now. It's the semi acoustic one, anyway. Maybe it's an EB2. Um, and that was uh, short scale. And so the strings that were on it were really very light. And that's kind of what I've stuck with because they were very nice and comfortable to play. And I could bend them. And as I wasn't particularly fussed about being a bass guitarist, I, I just wanted to, to play drums, really. Um, I, I just didn't really follow the normal rules that bass players are supposed to follow, you know, sort of stand at the back of the stage and dribble. So, I, you know, it was all right. Uh, nearly got these strings on, guys. And then what I'll do is I'll crank up um, a bit of music and just have a quick jam with myself. Yeah, there's been such a, a change in the way music's made these days. Uh, home recording is where it's at and you can do everything nowadays you know with the, the the computers that we have available I mean I've just been a Macintosh user since 1985 I had my first Mac SE and uh, I was introduced to it by Wally Badder of course the great Wally who was always insane with Macs he'd, he'd very often have two going at the same time which we always thought was hilarious in the studio because we didn't really catch on to what the computer thing was all about of course, nowadays I'm just I've got uh, what I've got four Macs in this studio. I've got uh, 
goodness knows how many indoors. It's just the way of it these days, isn't it? Plus iPhones and iPads and... Ooh. I'll just have a quick tweak of this and uh, see where we're at. Let's plug in here. Better tune it. Always good to tune the bass. Bit sharp. When you use strings on, you can stretch them in quite easily. Not that easily though. And uh, that's one thing we had to sort of put in on this bass is that where that bit of writing is is a, a, a called a bend well. So it gives you a nice little do things like that. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, okay. Very good. Next thing is uh, gaffer tape. Yeah, give me some gaffer tape. This is something I just stick around my thumb. To, uh, to protect my thumb really, this is something I've done since 1981 when we first went into Europe, uh, opening for the police, and we got some gigs in Holland on our own after that, and I got really carried away one night and split my thumb, and it was extremely painful, and I've never done it since, every night I just wrap up my thumb up now, and, um, and I've been doing it so long, it feels really odd to play without a bit of tape on. Although, you know, I don't recommend it for everybody. It's, it's um, you lose something of the feel. Oh, nice, yeah. Oh. Come in. Right, this is a bit of Gaddafi Duck. This is something that I, I sort of put together to play with my friends at the bass guitar show. Um, I hope it comes out all right on there.
see you. Goodbye.